technical interviews quite intimidating especially in the early days of your career but i assure you there's nothing to be afraid of because today i'm here to share with you the type of technical interviews they are there and how to best prepare for them what to expect before you step into that room i've done a couple share of technical interviews in the past few months if you've been following the channel you've seen some of them were losses some of them were wins so without wasting your time let's get into it okay let's get into the technicality from the first time the company reaches out to you, you might have a short call with the recruiter or HR just to gauge your skills and see what you've worked on and see if you are worth the engineer's time to see if the core skills align with the job post before you get into the technical side. That usually lasts about 30 minutes uh, to an hour if it's extreme. Just a bit of a check, finding out what's your stack, this is what you're looking for just to align, not technical at all. And then if you're successful from there, you're gonna get into the assessment side of things. So this can vary between company to company. You might move into an assessment or just straight up into an interview. Okay, what do I mean by assessments? As I did mention, companies do it differently. Some of them, they will give you an assessment where you actually have to do the kind of lead code solving algorithms. They'll give you something, maybe data manipulation or a string just to see how you solve a problem. So some of them might do it live. They might join on a call with you and you actually have to share your screen and they give you a problem and you code along. Let them know what's going through your head and all of that. And some of them, they might give you like a platform to go like test Gorilla and then you'll go there, you open your camera you go through like a couple of multiple choice and also like an actual problem solving there's gonna be an editor there that you're gonna write through but you can't open any tab on the other screens and then if you do it's gonna close off and kind of disqualify so that's the first type of assessments that's the kind of live coding while like kind of solving a question on an algorithm if I should put it that way kind of functional programming at the same time then we have the second one which is the take-home assessment this is usually a bit tricky. I prefer it, but the company will give you an assessment. They're gonna say, go create kind of an app, maybe give you the requirements, share a document with you, like these are the requirements, go build something like this, use a technology like this, or you are free to use whatever. And then they'll give you a space, like maybe a week or so, this, so I've talked about it in my previous video. I was given a week to do kind of like a smaller full stack and consume an API of theirs just to see how I do the integration. So this is going to be purely based off what you're going to work with just to test if whatever that you're doing is going to be up to standard. The way I'm saying this is tricky, it's because this, if it's in an intermediate level, it's not about how easy the app is. It's about how you structure your it's about how you structure your architecture, your folder structures, how you actually consume the API. Is it also, uh, you're also practicing like the solid principles, the principles in programming, is your code clean? Are you not repeating yourself? These are the things that they look at. They are not necessarily looking for you to complete the project. Anyone can do that in this day and time. And after that, you'll have to submit it maybe via a zip folder or you have to push it to github and then they'll go through the engineers will go through and then they'll invite you back and the way that this one usually works is after you have submitted this assessment which is going to be an app of some sort and then from there the engineers are going to invite you for a technical interview if the code is <laughs> good enough so maybe if it's bad you might just get cancelled off and be like okay this is ai code or this person doesn't even understand what they're doing they are not really discriminative of using ai you just have to be very aware of the principles you're applying why you're picking them over the other and that sort of thing don't just put code for the sake of putting it just know that if you're being pulled into maybe a certain file to explain certain things you need to be confident why you picked on this and at the same time be open to criticism and also learning something because some people make the mistake of like i wrote this for a reason i don't want to take whatever that you're saying and then they are not open-minded so they want to see what you picked why you picked it and also maybe they're going to share a few like guidance like this is how i would have done it which is really actually crucial you learn a couple of things i think I've done two interviews where they actually done something like that and actually the next interview following this assessment that you've submitted uh, we went to github and then open up the repo go through the file like what are you trying to do here why this why that and then you need to be able to articulate yourself very well technically and also in the high level so that you are able to get your message across while also getting 
the concept very concise to show that you actually done something that you really understand if that makes sense we have now passed the first phase which is the assessment whether it's going to be take home or kind of like live coding with an engineer on the screen or also it's going to be just a platform that you're going to use so that the platforms are different the best way to prepare for that is just knowing your algorithms or kind of practice it over and over because those are the things that you might have done a lot when you're still in varsity but you don't do in your day-to-day -day basis so you might need revisiting so kind of you can't predict what is going to be there but at the same time you can prepare for it you can be able to know if you're doing c-sharp knowing your link is going to be very it's going to be very advantageous knowing what why you will use a string builder instead of a string and also that those kind of things it's like the basics the revisiting the basics is going to be crucial for you and just practicing like problem solving because that's the thing that is there because the problems might not be the same exactly but the way you approach them really the same because might use a loop there they might want you to do something like maybe a binary search or something like that so those are the kind of things so you need to just practice on that there's no way of just i know what they will give me i'm just gonna ace it practicing and then you get there the problem solving the patterns that you've used before then you're gonna be able to solve them that's the best way to prepare for that a take-home assessment as i did say make sure you understand what you're putting in your code and also be aware of the structure that you do what does the company really use if they're using c sharp and based off the interactions you've had before and the solutions that they say they build how why do, how do you think they structure their stuff and the best practices i guess and also putting everything for a reason there don't just put stuff for the sake of putting it being able to explain your code because it will come back to you all right now we move to the technical interview this is where you'll be uh, interviewing with a couple of engineers which was a shock to me as well like there's probably two or three and then if you did the first assessment where you did the live coding uh, most likely they won't ask you about the approach because most of the time you'll be coding with them and you'll be explaining through if it's going to be like um with an engineer over maybe a zoom or google meets then there's no need for them to ask you why you did that because you'll be explaining yourself and then if you did uh the other one where you actually take home assessment and submitted it this interview is mostly going to be based off what you submitted going through just to pick your mind to see what's happening so this is the uh, second interview now and then also while they're picking through they'll be applying some principles like the solid dry whatnot clean code they'll be just trying to pick your mind like do you even know what you're doing here is this what you meant or is this what you mean so that's the kind of interview you might get after that one and if you are coming from the other assessment which was like they won't ask you about most of the time it's gonna be just a back and forth talking about your project and then also do you understand solid asking you attempt maybe in c sharp that could be like what in this case what would you do given this kind of a situation you want to consume an api and whatnot what would you use uh maybe in javascript how to, would you listen for an event or how to how does it actually what's the difference between react like why would you need react over just normal javascript and html so just basic thing maybe they also ask you restful apis but that's more on the entry level side so for that one it's just kind of knowing the general knowledge and also the uh, basics when it comes to yeah they also ask you object oriented programming stuff as well so that's also good so just reading watching a couple of videos there just to make sure that you really understand what you're talking about understanding the principles when do you need one and why not i don't think this is the hardest one i personally find this one the easiest i think this is the easiest one because it's just a normal conversation uh you explain what's object-oriented programming what why is it important what are the four pillars of it and whatnot so that's the kind of conversation that you might have if you have done the live coding one the lead code kind of questions and then the other one they might be asking really about your code like what's really happening this can be in person this also can be on online so it can really vary how it goes and how long they've booked you for if it's like that it might start off with the assessment being uh, with the back and forth just a chill chat talking about programming in general the principles and all of like react and whatnot based on the languages that you're using of course and then from then it could get into system designs this is not really 
popular in South Africa. I know they've done it on the other side. Typically, most companies that I've seen, even kind of bigger ones that are like development focused, they also do like three rounds of interviews. With the one that I've done and I've talked about in this specific video, it was more of three things mixed in the same time. It was the live coding, they gave me a laptop to actually do the lead code kind of question. They also gave me a whiteboard to talk about projects that I've done before. So drawing them out, like the system flow, what goes into this, why this structure and whatnot. So basically kind of like a whiteboard system design, but I was not given a problem to design a system, but just to talk about the ones that I've done before. And also after that, we did a live code review. They put some JavaScript code that was doing some certain functionality told me this is what the code is doing and how would you then fix it up and then from there I think it's basic knowledge of what you apply every day in your job I guess when you are writing code before you send a pull request or when you are reviewing it what things you will consider so those are the things that you would have to take into consideration I don't think there's a way to best prepare for it because this is basically your job. This is what you do on the daily. I think this was also an easy interview in, in terms of that portion. The one that really gets to people mostly is the live coding or the lead code kind of questions because people don't really do those things on a daily. I think you kind of forget now coming back, uh, being asked about uh, space complexity and time complexity and all of that, knowing, you know, uh, big O notation and all of those things. So I also used to be good with those when I was still in varsity because I was actually studying it mostly every day, every time I'm writing kind of like a smaller program. And then I will be considering all of those things as much as I still do on my day to day job. I wouldn't have to write every time down and all of this. So I guess a bit of practice and reusing those things will really go a long way. So that's the basic structure of technical interviews. The complexity really differs on your level. If you're being a interviewed for a junior, you're not gonna be asked really crazy stuff. You're not gonna be maybe asked about integration, you know, and architectural stuff. They're gonna ask be a bit lenient on you and maybe ask you about object-oriented programming, uh, RESTful APIs, a bit of maybe database design, depending on which stack you use. If you're on more of the SQL and if you know SQL and then that's kind of different so on the entry level it's going to be something like that and when you're going to intermediate and seniors that's where the interviews tend to be lengthy and also they try to go over and over I have an instance where I've started with a uh, technical interview where just chatting to an engineer back and forth getting to understand what I've done and all or whatnot and the principles that I usually do and then ask me about solid principles after that it was the assessment that was a take home and then after that it was the review of the assessment and then giving them pointers and then usually after that they make their decision i know big banks they might have more interviews and they might be more of the uh, western kind of interviewing process but basically all of this is what south african markets usually have and to best prepare for it is just to uh, read up when it comes to the technical uh, chat, when it comes to just talking to an engineer, finding out what you use and the principles you apply and those kind of things. And I think it becomes less intimidating the more that you do it. So I would say the best way to prepare for it might be to actually interview with a company that you don't mind getting an L from. So if you lose, you don't really care. So that will give you kind of a boost to say, you know what, I'm going whatever happens but if it happens and also doing mock interviews with your friends also helps you can just also go to hacker rank sign up and just be answering those questions because as much as you might not agree with the method of using the lead code kind of questions or the hacker rank kind of questions but it is what they are using you need the job you need to still do it so why not just go there solve a couple of problems if you have spare time and the other stuff is just getting better at your job day to day and then you know better what to use uh, get some mentorship from your seniors as well whatever they put in your code reviews make sure that you stick it up here and then you can reuse it next time because most of the stuff when it comes to talking to the engineers and it's not like live coding it's just gonna be general stuff that you do on your day-to-day -day and it's less intimidating after some time 